All right, greetings everyone, welcome back. So we're moving on to chapter five in my book, Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality by yours truly, David J. Kuhn from Qigong Awareness. All right, so chapter five, we're starting to turn it up now, okay? The first four chapters were like a nice warm up. This is how I look at it, okay? Uh, we're starting to get hot now in chapter five. Heat is very important. The lower Dantian, charging the lower Dantian, creating a certain degree of heat. It burns up through the system. When the upper chakras open, the upper chakras are cooling chakras. The lower chakras are hot. When they mix together, we get a profound uh, combination of things. Uh, if you haven't heard me teach or say anything about this before, I go into great detail about this in our certification program. But these chakra centers are not just energy centers. Every single one of them is associated with a set of endocrine glands. And endocrine glands secrete hormones. Hormones are the most powerful cell-to-cell -cell communicators in your body. They reach from head to toe and they last for days. We're talking powerful, powerful medicine. Qigong, yogic practices, meditation practices are tied to these internal elixirs, these internal hormones, and uh, therefore, uh, chapter five is called The Alchemist. There's a book out there called The Alchemist. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's Will Smith's favorite book. I've read parts of it. Um, I'm not dismissing the book uh, because it's probably a really good book. I've just read pieces of it by, because by the time I got to it, had I read that book at 21, I would have been like blown away. Um, but by the time I got to that book, um, I just, I didn't have it in me to finish it because I was always already on to reading um, other things. But for some of you, you might enjoy that book, the first book that started me out on my path of these kinds of ideas and these kinds of things was Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. And at some point, I'm actually going to finish this book um, called The Alchemist because uh, I've heard really good things about it. And again, it's one of Will Smith's favorite books. And Will Smith's really into this idea, as am I, the law of attraction. And so anyway, we have this uh, quotation here from Paul Coelho, if I said his name correctly. Uh, hopefully I did. The secret of life though, is to fall seven times and to get up eight times. Well, I can tell you after being run over by a trailer and then, you know, these, this is not the only obstacle that I ever faced in my life, but it was definitely one of them. And I talk about it a lot because I use it as the, uh, you know, the storyline to help people understand my journey and the journey of life. Some people have been run over literally and or metaphorically. And in my life, I've experienced both. And I often say that uh, for most of us, life is challenging and it will continue to be challenging. We're going to be faced by many outer challenges. And for me personally, the greatest influence that I've seen that I can have in my life is to manage my internal state manage my perception and my framing of what is going on around me. The stories that I tell about it, how I think about it, whether the glass is half full or half empty. Anyway, these are all the things that I work with. So this idea of alchemy, though, takes it a step further in terms of the practices. And the, the ancient idea of alchemy was about taking Go, uh, taking lead and turning it into gold, taking a heavy substance and turning it into a fine and refined product, end product called gold. When it comes to the chakra system and it comes to the Dantian system, those Dantians in particular, um, the lower Dantian is here related to the um, below the navel center. It's in a deeper setting energetically than the chakra system. But then also we come up here and the middle Dantian is related to the heart space. And then the upper Dantian is related to the third eye. That's the throat, but the third eye is just above there. And so uh, these Dantians are about further refining 
the energy and if i were to get specific with it after practicing for the last 40 years of what that actually means uh it's also about refining your emotional states things like depression anxiety fear etc and turning them into more enlightened energetic states such as unconditional love acceptance forgiveness things of this nature and the chakra system and the dantian system can help us to do that and i'm going to throw in one more thing we're not just uh changing these woo woo energy centers okay it's also about creating elixirs what in ancient times they would call elixirs and uh in western terminology we're talking about hormones we're talking about making concoctions of medicine in the form of hormones related to the chakra system related to the dantian system it changes the quality of your saliva what you're swallowing how you're swallowing and then what begins to unfold in your body, which I talked about earlier, which sometimes can turn into a raging river of energy moving through your body, which can be quite cathartic and for some people initially scary if they go that far, but it does take quite a bit of work to make that kind of thing happen. So hopefully by the time you get to the place where you have a river raging, you have a teacher and you're following along how this all works and you're ready to take the plunge some people that you know they go out and they do peyote or they go out and do ayahuasca or they go and do some of these other things um some of us actually just practice certain types of breath and uh certain practices that are going to bring us to similar states without uh the side effects of um drugs and so on because these hormones and these uh, cell to cell docking centers and everything within our body. They're there already. These natural drugs, they're already there in our body already. So, uh, anyway, there's a little bit about this idea of alchemy. So, um, also, this idea of, I referenced it already, but I'm just glancing at the book there, but um, looking at different situations in your life and alchemizing them, taking a situation that's kind of cruddy, kind of not that great and turning it into something uh better that requires that your mind be in a particular state and that you have a particular attitude and that you use your words in a particular way chapter six i jump into even more of what this means and this is where it gets even more heated in the book so to speak um this is like a very important uh chapter as we get as we start moving in the direction of higher energy and higher understanding. Chapter six, Master Your Mood. Uh, this particular quote I chose from Reverend uh, Dr. Michael Beckwith. Now, back in 2007, I started teaching seminars and workshops and stuff. And I was, I was a pretty big year for me. I had a lot going on. And I had written it, that was the time when The Secret came out and everything. And I, I had uh, in my journal, which I continue to journal to this day, I've always, always journal, been journaling for many years. And in my journal, I had it written that I wanted to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. It was one of the things that I wanted to do that year. And it, I mean, I kind of had some idea of what I was going to do with it, but I, I just, I had this idea that I wanted to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. So I put it up there and put it on my, uh, in my notebook and stuff. And, uh, that same year, uh, the secret came out and it became like the big thing and everybody went on the show and Dr. Reverend Beckwith was on there, um, uh, supporting the secret and the teachings of the secret and so on. And he is still to this day, um, he's the founder and the uh, teacher at the uh, Agape Church in Los Angeles. Anyway, what I like about him is that he very much likes to go like, because I'm a I've been psychic since I was a kid and I, I read people's energy and I do that in my healing work and so on and so forth. And when I look at Reverend Beckwith, 
Uh, this guy is in his third eye a lot. He's really in his third eye a lot. He's in his heart too, but he's he's definitely up there in his third eye. And you'll just see him. He closes his eyes and he's like, his mind and his energy is up here. And he's just talking. He's pretty much praying. I mean, that's what he's doing. He's just getting dialed in and really getting into that third eye. Anyway, I like that about him. And uh, they invited me. They called the Oprah show, called me up, actually invited me. Um, it was a follow-up to The Secret, um, his program, the program that Dr. Beckwith was on, Reverend Beckwith, and um, they asked me to come on the show. And for various reasons, uh, I actually declined. And um, uh, yeah, I missed my, perhaps missed my opportunity on that, but my intuition uh, told me that it wasn't uh, time for me to go on the show. And it was shortly thereafter that uh, Eckhart Tolle uh, came on the show and uh, was on the Oprah program. Uh, anyway, it's a little side story. So uh, the quote here that I have for chapter six is, you are at a choice point in every moment of each circumstance each circumstance, each activity, spoken word, and thought. Let me say it again. You are at a choice point in every moment of each circumstance, each activity, spoken word, and thought. And again, from Reverend Michael Beckwith. So we're always at this choice point. And, you know, I just referenced Eckhart Tolle too. So Eckhart Tolle, right? Uh, this idea behind the power of now. Every moment is now. Now, 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 now. So in my book, I have various exercises that over the years, I believe, have worked very, very well for me to heal not only the spine, but for example, you'll hear stories of how I broke this hand in four places. Boom, 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 boom. Actually, it was three. Three places. Later, I broke it in a fourth place. But anyway, <laughs> three places. Okay. My knuckles were all the way back down by my wrist. I had broken um, three bones there, and the doctor said I would never be able to lift my fingers again. Qigong is about breathing, but Qigong is also about... <sighs> what I do with my mind, my breath, my energy. Now, when I had broken my hand, it was very difficult to move my hand around like this. And again, the surgeons told me I'd never be able to lift my fingers again. They said I'd never be able to lift all of those fingers ever again. And they wanted to put uh, metal pins here in my knuckles, and I decided I didn't want them. And so um, just didn't feel right to me, didn't want to do it, so on. So uh, anyway, I went home. I healed the hand myself. Uh, they put a partial hard cast. They wanted to put an entire hard cast on there. I said, no, I didn't want a hard cast. One of my teachers had told me that I wanted to expose those broken bones to the sun on a daily basis. And so I said, no, no, no hard cast. And uh, I came back. He told me, you're going to be back here in eight weeks. You're never going to be able to lift those fingers again. I came back in three and a half weeks for my checkup. He was amazed. He couldn't believe it. My hand was completely healed. He told me I could go home and do push-ups on my hand. I was reluctant to go do push-ups because you should have seen the atrophy in my hand. It was so shrunk, but the bones were healed. He said, I've never seen a hand and or broken bones, period, heal this quickly before. He said, what is it that you do again? He wanted my business card, which was pretty cool. So anyway, uh, when we heal ourselves, you're when you're working with healing yourself, it's like in jujitsu, for example, we talk about jujitsu on the mat. There's like, you know, pushing and pulling and wrestling and flowing and crashing like water, as Bruce Lee would say, that happens on the mat. And then, but we have a whole life that we live off of the mat. So whether that's jujitsu or that's karate, or in this case, it's qigong. There's life on the grass, if you will, practicing Qigong out in the park or practicing Qigong in the school. There's life in the school and then there's life outside the school. You know, most of your life for most people is spent outside the school. Do you realize that? If you don't practice the way that I practice, you might not realize that. 
So I share that with you. Most of your time is not going to be in the Qigong studio. It's outside the Qigong studio. So learning to have the right attitude, learning to realize that at every moment of your life, there's a choice point. How am I going to show up to this moment? What Qigong practice can I bring to this particular moment of my life, this moment of right now, this power moment, this choice point? What practice can I bring? Is it breath of fire? Is it waterfall? Is it walking and having a particular attitude and saying, I am the supreme grandmaster creator of my personal reality and I have total dominion over my life. And you throw the cold water on your face and you go for a walk and you keep saying it. This is not about positive thinking. It is about chapter six shifting your mood. If you can get on the right train and right track of thought, you will shift your mood. All right, listen carefully. We're not going to go to the next chapter until the next video, but we're going to conclude about this chapter, a very, very important chapter, the most important chapter thus far in my book, chapter six, because it's so much easier to say than it is to do. But all of the work that I will teach you is about shifting what Tony Robbins and many of the others refer to as shifting state. Shifting the state of your energy. Why? Because listen, until you shift the state of your energy, like let's say you're not confident. In order for you to be confident, it's not just some words you mumble or yell or shout. It's about shifting the state of energy from lack of confidence to courage and then from courage to confidence. And that is like changing gears. And one of the ways to do that, one of the ways is to use the power of your words and the power of your thoughts directing your words and sometimes they can be written down and sometimes they can be marched and they can be walked. But what is so important, if you want to grasp the concept that underlies it all, is that it, and this is why I said earlier when the person was saying, book about positive thinking. No, not quite. Keep reading. It's not about positive thinking. It's about talking, speaking, uh, performing over your energy over your brain, over your body, over your water, over your nervous system, exercising your voice, exercising the power in your spine, the power in your chakras, etc., your energy to command a certain way of being. And if you do it, guess what? It will shift your state. And the moment your state shifts, your energy shifts, your energy field shifts and catch the punchline. If that wasn't enough of a punchline, catch the punchline. Everybody is a walking magnet. And so if you shift your energy state, if you shift the state, the mood, if you shift it, mood is the easiest way to express what your state is. If you're in a bad mood, well, until you can shift your state to where you're in a good mood, it is going to be very difficult for good things to find you because whether you realize it yet or not, like attracts like in this life. That's what law of attraction is about. Like will always attract like. And until you learn that and gain the wisdom of that, in other words, own the wisdom of that, that one is really going to probably bother you for a while. I know it bothered me. It was like, man, I'm always trying and I'm always, but I was a trying and I was struggling. That's why Yoda said trying is failing because you're not yet in the right state. All right, so we have many practices to help you get into the right state and change the mood and thereby change what you are attracting. I will conclude with this on this longer section here related to this chapter. Not only do I do private medical Qigong sessions and so on, I have been a coach and been considered a coach for 
whatever, 30 plus years. I was a professional counselor. I worked in a hospital. Since then, I got a private practice. I started coaching people. I coach athletes. I coach people who are not well. I coach people about things that you would consider, say, law of attraction. So business, relationship, all of it. Because to me, it, it all fits together. It's all one and the same, right? So when it comes to that kind of idea, it is about uh, helping people to understand that the law of attraction is always in effect. Like if I, if I pick this book up and I drop it, physics says it's always going to fall, right? Gravity is going to take it down. That is like the law of attraction in motion. It's always working. It's always working. And when we're getting our butts kicked by the law of attraction, it, the way I like to say it is it's like the law is working us rather than we are working the law. So if you want to learn to work the law, the law of attraction, and not just in a like, no offense, but half-ass way, but like a fully embodied way where you're incorporating Qigong and you're incorporating mind and breath and maybe, maybe you're journal writing and maybe you're walking and you're talking over your body. And you're understanding, I need to shift my state. I need to shift my mood. My mood needs to change because it's going to improve my health. It's also going to improve all of the circumstances that are going on in my life because we're at the epicenter of our life. We're at the center of our life. Everything else is revolving around us. So keep your center strong, uplift your center, learn to change your mood. That's chapter six. Check it out. By the way, it's on ebook, so you don't have to buy the physical hard copy book if you don't want to. All right, see you soon for chapter seven. Thanks.